great. Thank you very much. This is WQIR 514, Atlanta 947. Julie in Woodstock with this week's new user tips and operating procedures segment. This week on the new user tips and operating procedures, we will talk about new user basics. We've gone over this before, but with so many new users coming to the network all of the time, it's important to hit some of these topics again. It's good information for some and a review of basics for others. We know that a lot of folks monitor for some time before they get a license or become a member, but a common question is what is a TAC number? For someone brand new, it can be confusing with TAC numbers and call signs. Let's talk a bit about both. Once someone gets their FCC license, that's all it takes to get on the air. But the use of our repeater network requires permission, and that is granted to supporting members of North Georgia GMRS network. The FCC requires that we identify using the call sign they issued. But let's not forget, that call sign covers your entire family. So if someone calls out to WQIR 514, it would be hard to know if that call was meant for me or for Justin. That's where tactical unit numbers come in. When someone calls out to Atlanta 947, we know that call is meant for me. Alternatively, a call to Atlanta 946 would be a call to Justin. Let me break. Another new user tip has to do with when to key your mic and when to talk. Remember to always leave a beat or two after the end of someone's transmission before you key your mic. Also, it's important to leave some time after you key before you begin speaking. In a linked repeater environment, it takes some time for all of the repeaters to establish a link and are ready to operate. If you talk too soon, the first part of your message may be lost in the links. Avoid the habit of quick keying. Remember to slow the pace. Another tip. Many folks have learned that keying the microphone and releasing the key will cause the repeater to produce a courtesy tone or a tail squelch. A sort of screak noise that tells us the repeater activated. However, a linked repeater network like ours cannot have a tail squelch. Any sound the repeater makes after you let off the key results in the linking system thinking it's a new transmission, which activates the repeater again, cascading across the network, which results in a new tail squelch, which gets treated like a new signal, which cascades across the network, which results in a new tail squelch. Do you see where I'm going? We cannot use a repeater-generated courtesy tone or a tail squelch on the network. However, we are researching a network-based courtesy tone. Depending on test results, we hope to introduce this feature next year. Finally, I'd like to remind you to renew. The tip here is to secure your membership for next year and preserve your TAC number. TAC numbers not protected by renewals will become available in January for brand new members to use. We understand that not everyone sees the benefit of membership and may choose not to renew. To that, we say thank you for the support and wish you the best in future endeavors. And know that the door is open and when the time is right, we'd love to welcome those former members back. Meanwhile, we had over 400 new members last year, so we will need to recycle some TAC numbers. The best way to be sure your TAC number remains yours is to renew before the end of the year. 
We hope you'll join us in keeping North Georgia GMRS Network the largest family communications network in the country. These are just a few tips and operating procedures. I hope you'll tune in next week for my next episode. If you have any questions or suggestions for the new user tips and operating procedures, send me a note at julietngmrs.org. We are North Georgia GMRS Network, and this is WQIR 514, Atlanta 947, Julie, and I'm clear. Good night, everyone.